Welcome back. It's time for another movie with a message. As always, serving as our guide is Father Robert Lauder, who runs the Friday Film Festival at the Immaculate Conception Center in Douglaston. This week, a story of heroic defiance of state-sanctioned evil, even when threatened with death. Take it away, Father. Thanks, guys. Our movie with a message this week is Sophie Scholl. It came out in 2005. Uh, when people discuss films with me, I often say I, I know of two perfect films. Well, by perfect film, I mean everything works. The plot is terrific, the acting is terrific, the camera work is terrific, the music is terrific. And those two films are A Man for All Seasons and Breaker Morant. I'm sure many of you have seen A Man for All Seasons. When you watch it again, watch it critically, and I defy you to find a weakness in that film, and I say the same thing about Breaker Morant. Now, Sophie Scholl may not be a perfect movie, but it is a great, great film. And it's one of those films that disturbs our conscience. Uh, it, it challenges our conscience. I would say the message of this film is we are responsible for our conscience. Uh, let me give you an example, okay? For much of my life, uh, I held a just war theory, and I believe that we could have judge, a just nuclear war. Over a period of years, partly through statements by, from John Paul II, partly from things I read, I came to believe there can't be a just nuclear war. Nothing justifies killing millions and millions and millions of people. Now, I'm not saying that to convince anyone. I'm just trying to say conscience does not change easily. Uh, another example of a change in my own conscience was capital punishment. For years, I believed an eye for an eye. You know, you kill someone, therefore we can justly kill you. Over a long period of time, I've changed my view, and that's partly due once again to Pope John Paul II and things I've read. Uh, I, I personally don't believe capital punishment helps. It, it doesn't change criminals. Uh, and I, I think we have to believe people can change. And uh, there have been mistakes. Pe people have been executed and hung who are innocent. So I think that uh, Sophie Scholl is a terrific film. The beginning of it is so exciting. It reminded me of Hitchcock at his best. Uh, these, uh, Sophie Scholl and her brother are, sp are, are uh, spreading leaflets criticizing Nazi Germany at the university. And this is done so well that you're, you're, well, you're hoping they won't get caught, they'll be able to do it. And they're just about to get away with it when Sophie remembers that, when Sophie points out they've got some extra leaflets. So let's go up to the next floor in this university and spread them. And you know, you, you've got your, your heart in your throat. And sure enough, when they go up, they get caught. Um, and then as the, f the film develops, and much of it is Sophie being interrogated, you keep asking yourself, what would I do? What would I, in this situation, what would I do? And then you begin to think of, about current problems in the United States. What am I doing about those? You know, one of the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church is preferential option for the poor. Now, you and I probably can't solve the fact that one third of the human race is starving. We can't, but we can do something. And, and we must always, I think, I believe, incorporate that into our faith. So uh, I'm, I'm going to guess almost no one watching this show has seen the movie Sophie Show. And so I'm going to encourage you to see it. Uh, this, this film was chosen by others, but once I saw it, I was delighted it was. And I'm going to, I am going to use it in one of my future festivals. So I hope I've encouraged you to watch Sophie Scholl. Be disturbed by it. Having our conscience disturbed is a good thing. You know, David, Sophie Scholl's defense of the absolute authority of conscience, even over the authority of the state, really is the heart of the film. And it comes directly from uh, Blessed John Henry Cardinal Newman, um, whose, whose teachings on conscience really informed the thought of the historical Sophie Scholl. The Scholls, Sophie and her brother Hans, were actually Lutherans, but their co-conspirator in the film, Hans Probst, is a Catholic. Um, they were very influenced by Catholic thought. They almost became Catholics on the day that they were put to death. Um, uh, but their pastor persuaded them that this would be heartbreaking to their parents, and so they died as Lutherans. But, but that teaching on conscience really uh, runs through the film. Um, and what makes Sophie such a wonderful heroine is that she achieves something that's so rare in cinema. She makes goodness attractive. Uh, and much more attractive and interesting than evil. You know, she's so smart and she has nerves that are so excruciatingly steady. The interrogation scenes are absolutely riveting. At first you think she's, she's, she's gonna get away with it. She's, she's just clever enough. Uh, in, in the end, it's not quite enough, uh, but she's one of the most compelling heroines or, or heroes for that matter um, that I've seen in, in any film ever. Uh, you know, what I think makes her even more compelling is that when we first 
uh, meet her in the film. She's not a political subversive. She's a young girl singing to the radio along with another Bobby Soxer, uh, which makes her later heroism all the more remarkable and inspiring. Reminding us what Blessed John Paul II and our current Holy Father have said at numerous World Youth Days. It's not that we ask too much of young people, but it's often that we ask too little. I'm glad that Father men also mentioned Demand for All Seasons because I think both these films make wonderful companion viewings, uh, particularly given the, uh, the U.S. Bishop's recent call for a fortnight for freedom for Catholics uh, in response to the attacks on religious liberty because I think both films really offer wonderful examples of bravery uh, and, and, and pr the, the preeminence of conscience uh, in, in the face of religious persecution. Absolutely, and both films are on my list of 14 films for the fortnight of freedom at decentfilms.com. And like Robert Bolt, the Oscar-winning screenwriter for A Man for All Seasons, the filmmaker here, German director Mark Rutherman, uh, is also an atheist, uh, which makes it even all the more remarkable that he was able to create such a profoundly spiritual film. Yes, it, it is, and I had a chance to interview him and ask him about that, and uh, Rutherman said to me something very interesting. He said, I believed in God the whole time that I was telling Sophie's story while making this film, and it really shows in the film.